Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. It takes your decisions to fail in life and it takes your decisions to succeed in life. Hmm. Let me tell you this. The major way causes and demonic operations work is to manipulate this gift. Did you hear what I said? The major way causes work is not to veto you, is to manipulate your power to choose so that you make poor or ill decisions that attract negative consequences to your life. They depend on that power. That is why causes cannot work for a dead man. That is why blessings cannot work for a dead man. Because the factor that gives them power is gone. The power to choose is only there when life is there. That's why the Bible says there is hope for the living. He that is joined to the living lose everything but the one thing God gave you if it is still there you can get back again people have lost billions of dollars billions and millions of dollars and they sat back in trouble but they said I will get back again and they got back again are we together now there are people who have had their homes washed away by flood and while others were rejoicing someone else was saying the same wisdom that brought it is still there i will arise again someone say i will arise prophesy say i will arise one more time say i will arise stop giving the flimsy excuse that you've not got a job since you were a graduate I don't mean to insult you. I'm being harsh on you for a reason. An upgrade desires a stretch. If I don't stretch you, you will not rise. For as long, let me tell you this. Mediocrity always thrives on excuses. A justifiable reason. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. Such a sad story. I sympathize with you. But what are you going to make out of your life from that point? Isn't it amazing that the excuses that most believers give justifying their lives? I was abused when I was young. Now, I don't downplay your pain, but how old are you now? Are we together? How old are you now? Someone defrauded me in 2010. For God's sake, what, what is today's date? 2024. Do you know from the time you started regretting that was the day someone made up his mind and by now they've caught up with destiny someone be angry say i will arise <laughs> say it again i will arise <laughs> god has called me into the music ministry you may say let me see how you are using your gift to rise and scale not just the gift of singing the gift of a will that when others are sleeping, you are waking up praying in the night. You are using your will. You are rewriting your own possibilities. That's how he sang his song. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. You be lifted. Above all other gods, we lay our crown and worship you. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown. Let me use him for an instance when the spirit of revelation was resting it was not on only him it rested on someone who snored away an opportunity to have written a song too 
slept it over and said I will think about it one day whereas someone got up and said this is it only one line of the song I will start from there it's a seed enough are we together church is quiet tonight God's word is coming as a rod shaking away every excuse for some of you by now you should be doing business at a transcontinental scale with the kind of intelligence God gave you but again last year I had the honor of speaking at the world conference here in your nation of the full gospel businessmen's fellowship and I remember speaking to them and challenging them that in as much as we have seen so much there is always more in revelations he said come up here and I will show you he already had revelations from chapter 1 2 3 4 but he said come up here come up here is someone getting angry you have wasted the opportunity to rewrite and redefine your destiny but there's no point regretting because that gift is still with you you lost things but not the power to choose you lost men but not the power to choose you lost opportunities but not the power to choose let me tell you the truth the next time you see someone saying I've lost everything tell him yes hey, why didn't you come for this prophetic conference let me be a lecturer God shielded the power to choose such that the only way to lose it is when you are dead provided you are alive there is no enchantment there is no spirit that can take away from you the power to choose hallelujah hallelujah is someone learning please sit down please sit down let me show you a few things very quickly and then we'll pray the real value of wisdom write this down the real value of wisdom is in its ability to help you make superior decisions the real value of wisdom is not the acquisition of information the real value of wisdom is that you gather together the factors that help you to make superior destiny defining decisions don't tell me you are wise show me if you are wise when it has to do with wisdom you don't say I am wise you show it by the superiority of the decisions that come from the information you have or claim to have so if you claim you are wise and I do not see superior decisions that is why wisdom goes hand in hand with mighty works are we together now now I want to give you seven decisions that you must make with your life seven destiny defining decisions I give you a guarantee by the authority of Scripture if you pay attention to these seven decisions I assure you whether you are here in this auditorium or outside or following online for some of you it's in a matter of days you will see an upgrade that will surprise you seven decisions I told you not all decisions carry the same weight remember that by the privilege of God's grace the honor of mentorship and the ministry of the Holy Spirit I have distilled seven decisions that a man must make with his life it doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry business family a student a career person if you do not make these seven decisions well your life is doomed to fail are you ready open my eyes oh God someone pray in one minute open my eyes open my eyes for the sake of my tomorrow for the sake of those connected to this grace
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to run through this list. For every one of these decisions I mentioned, I'll not have the time to teach elaborately on it. But when I touch on it, we're going to pray it into our lives. Is that a good deal? So I mentioned number one, you pray. If you are not praying, know it's an attack. Remember I told you prayerlessness is a choice. So once we mention it, you pray with all your heart. This is it. I'm finding my roadmap out of a life of mediocrity. For some of you, after tonight's service, you will look Satan to the face and say, so this is how powerless you are. I did not know that you are as powerful as my indecision. But now that I have chosen to use this gift God gave me. Number one. What is the first decision you must make in your life? You desire to rise to a new dimension? To rise to a new level in ministry, in career? The first decision every man must make consciously is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress if you're writing underline the word exceptional please the decision to use your life to use your days to make exceptional spiritual progress to know the Lord, to love the Lord, and to serve Him with all your heart. It is a choice. It is a choice. To be serious with God is a choice. To love Jesus passionately, whether you are in ministry or not, it's a choice. The decision to plunge yourself into everything pro-kingdom is a choice. And recall I told you that you do not choose consequences. You make decisions and to the degree to which they are superior, they attract superior consequences to your life. Like the anointing, like wisdom, like grace, like favor, like open doors. These are the benefits that come with knowing and loving the Lord. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. Let's hurry up. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. The Bible says, and he, the he there being Uzziah, sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God let's read the final sentence together ready one to go and as long as he sought the Lord God made him to prosper who made him prosper make no mistakes about it God makes men prosper but he does that in honor to their decision his own part was that he made up his mind to seek the Lord. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. God is still a maker. The Bible calls him the maker of the heavens and the earth. But he still makes men. He can make ordinary men like Joshua Selman and turn them to signs and wonders. He can make an ordinary person like you that by this time next year, when we come into Ghana, we'll say, are you not that sister that was quietly seated in that meeting? And you will say, well, I made a decision to serve the Lord. I made a decision to serve the God of heaven. And look the anointing he brought to my life. Look the power, look the favor, look the doors he's opened for me as for me and my house me and my destiny me and the vision God has given me we will serve the Lord it's a decision that means I have many options but I choose to serve the Lord someone tonight is your night of decision that right here whilst you are sitting you can say I choose to serve Jesus I have other options I can get into traditional practice and do a lot of demonic things I can get into occultism it's an option I can get into just believing in myself without God but I choose as an act of my will I use this gift to serve the Lord the Bible says except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it. Is that still in your Bible? Except the Lord watches over a city, 
beloved people, he says, the watchmen watched, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he giveth his beloved sleep. Say, I choose to serve the Lord. Shout it convincingly. Say, I choose to serve the Lord. I choose to serve the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a choice. So when someone looks at you and says, why are you always going to church? Tell them, because I chose to serve the Lord. Why are you a faithful worker in church? It's a choice. I was not manipulated. I was not coerced. It's a choice. Why do you love to read your Bible? It's a choice. Why do you love ministry? It's a choice. A choice. A choice. You have the power to choose. And don't get angry at my choice. Because I have a will. You have a will. If you see my results, don't envy. I use that gift. You can also use that gift. Are we together? chosen to love him with all my life I've chosen to serve him all my days it's not a choice because I'm a preacher it was the choice that made me a preacher look at me Bishop sir you will be amazed at how many people have not chosen to serve the Lord they found themselves in church. They were born by Christian parents and so they can't run away from church. Are we together? And they found themselves becoming youth pastors, choir director, and they are stuck with this burden called God. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised My one desire Is that you be praised That you be praised That you be praised Somewhere in the course of this service I'm going to give someone an opportunity Who desires to use this gift for the first time in this way to verbalize, vocalize, and act out your desire for Jesus. And when that time comes, do not harden your heart like you did not hear this preacher. Remember, you do not choose consequences. You make decisions. Your grandfather had a choice to serve Jesus, but he used his will to serve Satan. The result of this decision is the pain you've gone through from childhood to adulthood. Don't let your children go through the same thing because of your carelessness. That everything you came into, let your children not come into. You, you can be the bridge between yesterday and tomorrow. I came from a family of poverty, you say. I came from a family that served Satan. And I know what those causes did to me, you will say. But from this day forward, I make up my mind that everyone that comes after me will serve the living God. John 17 verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Number two. Is someone learning? The second destiny defining decision that everyone under the sound of my voice must make tonight is the decision to be transformed. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. Write it down please. The decision to be transformed. The decision to be transformed. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whatever you want to change, 
Lord, you can change. That is the power of a transformed mind. That's what a transformed mind does. A transformed mind comes into partnership with the will of God. A transformed mind is how you tell God, Amen. That everything you have desired for me, let it flow through the lens of my transformation to my destiny. Listen, every result in the spirit is mindset, belief system dependent. Prosperity, belief system dependent. Poverty, belief system dependent. Leadership, belief system dependent. Mediocrity, belief system dependent. Influence, belief system dependent. Here's what the Bible says. It says, Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of God, it says, that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable. It calls it your reasonable act of service or worship. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. It's the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with this age. It says, but be ye transformed. Transformed. The same process that transits an insect from egg, larva, pupa, adult. How many of you know that all of those four stages, the insect does not look the same? No. The larva does not look the same as pupa. There are things that the adult insect has that at a larva stage or a pupa stage does not have. For instance, the ability to fly. Are we together? So the Bible says be transformed. In your transformation, you will prove through your life that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In your transformation. Philippians 2 verse 5 says, let this mind be in you the word let means permit allow do not restrict do not restrain let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus jesus did not just win because he was the son of god there was a mindset that kept victory in his life let me tell you the truth even if satan is not in existence a poor mediocre mindset already tends to defeat Hallelujah. Mindset. The decision to be transformed. Let me have two people here, two gentlemen. Two gentlemen, you come and another one, please come. Very quickly, come. One stand by my left, the other stand by my right. Thank you. Watch this, everybody. So these are two people, both born again, they are saved. Are we together? Now, when I come to you, Let's say this gentleman, look at this. He's saved, but he's not transformed. He's not known the value of things like honor. He's not known the value of things like responsibility and diligence. This man can see me and just brush his shoulder, and I have within my power to help him. This guy can recycle pain right now because of a law he violated. And it is the absence of transformation, not redemption. Redemption is there. But transformation was not there and he will still suffer as if he's not saved are we together whereas this gentleman because he came to church and in addition to his being saved he's learned the law of honor that when doors close they close because of dishonor to God to men and to principles this gentleman can see me and say good afternoon sir no stand up you don't have to kneel are we together good afternoon sir and I can look at him and say young man I, I this I mean you must have been mentored by a good pastor so what do you do oh I'm a graduate trusting God for a job can you do the work of a secretary you call it breakthrough in one minute a door opens now watch this the difference is not redemption they are both saved but this man either through structured mentorship or the responsibility of getting materials to transform his mind he's got a superior belief He's understood life. Are we together now? Now look up. I can give this gentleman a thousand dollars. I don't know how much that adds up to your Ghana CD, but a thousand dollars. 
15,000 Ghana cities. Am I right? Well, 15 or 16 is around the same corridor. So now you look at me. So I'm giving this guy a $1,000. I'm giving this guy a $1,000. But because of transformation, he's learned to delay gratification. Are we together now? And rather than living a fake life, he can take that $1,000 out of it, go to the bookstore and buy materials from people he may never meet physically. But he can distill their ideas and use them like ladders towards a superior life. He can take a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars from that and go and sow to a man of God and receive a prophetic blessing he can take a hundred dollars take it to his mother and say mama I may not have much but I know the value of honor please take this and bless me look at what he's doing with his thousand dollars this gentleman even though a church goer can waste the money like a prodigal son because he's not been educated enough to know that it is up to you what you do with it at the end of it through that thousand dollars this guy has a prophetic word a blessing wisdom he saved enough whereas this guy has destroyed every other thing both of them will come to God and they will ask him why did you succeed he will say God why did you fail he will say God both of them blame their results on God and God says no I gave both of you the same gift the power to choose you gathered information that helped you to choose wise that is the power of revelation and wisdom this man ignored wisdom and even in the midst of opportunity he still destroyed it maybe I just described somebody in this place right now you may be this man on your way towards a great destiny or this man any of these two depends on your determination to be transformed do not tell me I am born again the riches that are in this life you have received flows through a transformed mind if your mind is not transformed the potential of your being saved cannot be made manifest who is learning tonight are we together transformation it is part of transformation to know that getting materials to build your mind is better than getting clothes to live a fake life for now dress your mind and your mind will dress your body But dress your body and leave your mind. Your mind will have to strip the clothes on your body to cover its shame. The choice is yours. So you see someone who is at this point buying a Bible, buying materials, traveling from place to place, praying every day. This gentleman may be in one small room fasting and praying every time you meet him studying and you are like mr man don't you enjoy your life he knows that every time does not provide every opportunity i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh on every man is someone learning now this is what you get when you come to church transformation you will walk out of this place right now and your friends who were your friends yesterday you are not even aware that they are no longer your friends now as you are seated now because something transformation has produced dissociation the next time they call you you will not have a common ground for discussion that's when you will know you have grown the things you were discussing yesterday your your priorities and your interests have been altered now while you hear them speaking on mediocre things gossiping about others you tell them you know what I really don't have that passion again and I don't mean to be rude I I have seen that if I waste this gift God gave me and I'm not ready to allow you make me waste that gift I want my child tomorrow to be able to say mommy thank you thank you for listening to this man of God you can be this man right here saved but not transformed no passion for the word no passion for truth no passion for destiny altering decisions 
or destiny altering information what do you know about leadership what do you know about organization what do you know about responsibility what do you know about success what do you know about victory what do you know about an excelling life what do you know about failure all of these have already been trapped and distilled in a man's pain the pain you want to go through someone has gone through it for you and he took from his pain and put together a material that in 30 minutes can deliver you for the next 30 years is someone learning i made up my mind that i will not only be a preacher i will be a transformed preacher Transform. Transform. My brother, my sister, listen to me. For some of you, you are the first person right now in your family that God is counting on to rise. Don't disappoint destiny. Did you hear what I said? Don't disappoint destiny. Don't sit back and disappoint destiny. Once you are seated now, imagine your children, born or unborn, imagine them saying, Mommy, listen to this man listen to this man listen to this preacher but you can still use that wheel and say you know what he's talking nonsense i have made my own choice my own is to encourage you to make that choice thank you gentlemen the lord honor you the decision to be transformed listen to me this night when you go back home write the various areas of your life where you know you are in ignorance and start pursuing knowledge go online this is the healthy use of internet huh run away from all these groups talking nonsense and wasting your time they are helping you choose in a demonic way that will destroy your life i love the lord as a man of god but my last compromise was because of finances I think I need to add financial knowledge so that I don't I, I don't start practicing things as a man of God I, I know my conscience tells me manipulating members is demonic but I need the money so what do you do you go and get a material God's financial system enter and the Holy Spirit who has seen your desire will navigate you to a message that has distilled all nonsense from sense and in five minutes you start a journey with dignity and from that decision you say i will be a preacher with integrity i will never manipulate anybody for gain maybe you are a father beating your wife every day even though you are praying in tongues it means there's something you do not understand take responsibility how to be a godly visionary father spirit of god i'm ignorant i confess my ignorance but i don't want this to be this way help me and you will find one material oh love your wife this is this this is that and you can go back with humility honey i'm sorry you married an ignorant man but he's no longer an ignorant man i'm on a journey to transformation give me time give me one month encourage me while i'm doing that and after one month you have a man every garden you see that is well manicured was done by someone no garden fixes itself is someone learning you're a man of god but nobody's inviting you even though you are anointed you are anointed but you do not understand the protocol of honor and ethics you come to preach and perhaps lambast everybody insult every father of faith there and preach with your anointing and while you are preaching they are marking you with a red viral never invite this gentleman again never invite this gentleman again and you call it an attack it's lack of transformation it doesn't mean you are bad it just means you are not transformed who is God speaking to so enter a covenant am I wasting your time this is how to upgrade an old version of you is giving way for a new version of you now Apostle, but everybody who can bless me does not like me. Let me tell you why. Because all you do is call them, disturbing them to ask them for money. Nobody has that time to carry an extra luggage. Why don't you try this? Send them a text. Sir, just thinking about the last help you showed me in October last year, I just wanted to send a text to tell you I'm still grateful. God bless you. That's it. 
the man who reads that text says my wife look at this now the Holy Spirit can walk upon their mind in honor to your transformation and say this lady in this day of perversion so there is a lady that can have this kind of discipline let's call and help her again and the call comes whereas you would have been pleading for a thousand Ghana CDs they will now give you 15,000 Ghana CDs by transformation because every time you are grateful you make the person who gave you one to give again every time you are grateful whether to God or to men let me tell you rather than begging be grateful it achieves the same result but one carries honor and the other one carries this honor when you are grateful it's a way to ask for more without asking for more are we learning transformation learn to tell people thank you I hope I'm not wasting your time if we wherever if we stop this I didn't come to waste your time I came to show you what you can see the result now right now you can know that you are changing there are many of you the simple reason why doors have closed is because you don't know how to say thank you you will beg with a thousand text messages and say thank you with one word thanks And the person looks at your text and says, I will never help this person again. It's not an attack. It is calamity you bring upon yourself by not using your power to decide. Tonight, everyone here, you can make up your mind that as soon as we share the grace, I will find the five people who God has used to invest in my life in a way and send thank you to all of them. And they will call you and say, what for? You say, I came to church and I was mentored methodically that one of the ways I use my will is to contend for transformation. You'll be surprised you will invite someone tomorrow without saying come. Transformation. How about apologizing when you are wrong? Culture tells us when you are wrong, fight and act as if you are not wrong. Look at the trouble it has brought. Battles that are your concern and battles that are not your concern, you are still fighting them. Battles with no reward. I am sorry has sent nations to war. Lack of saying it, I'm sorry. Because we interpret I'm sorry as I am weak. I am sorry means I am so superior, I will not let my ego stop my advancement. There are marriages today that would, should not have broken simply because somebody was too proud to say i'm sorry i'm sorry means i am better today than i was yesterday we are human and we all make mistakes maybe i should teach you everybody say i'm sorry, I'm sorry. one more time I'm sorry. you see how it's stinging your ego while you are saying it say it till it dies say i'm sorry This is what it means to be transformed. Don't just look for anointing, power, power, power. There is a place for that. But the value of power is that it is invested upon a transformed mind. When power is invested upon a mind that is not transformed, it's like pouring water in a container with holes. It will not retain. This is only two over seven. Imagine what happens when you make seven over seven. How could your destiny remain the same? Are you now seeing that you've been blaming God for many things? You are learning now by yourself that truly it is not God's fault. So I do not know this much. This is why you should honor your bishop and his wife for making this meeting happen. Because it has become the basis for your transformation. It's true. Please be seated. I have a few minutes, but let's see what we're able to do. Who is learning tonight? Transformation. Make up your mind. I will never shout foolishly at people again and say, that's how we are in our family. Change. Change. Nobody's like that. It's a lie. There is nobody who is temperous by default. You allow demon spirits to capitalize on your will. You can change. A soft answer turns away wrath. 
Apostle, you don't know me as quiet as I am. When that thing comes on me, stop it from coming on you. Stop it from coming on you. Stop it from coming on you. Is someone learning what I'm saying? Stop it from coming on you. Tell yourself, I will be decent, modest with words. I will not be careless with my life again. No. The value of my spirituality will translate to my excellence. It will be clear that I know God and I love God. This is a way of a superior man. Transformation. Have I challenged someone enough? So go back tonight. No gossiping again. Block those pages. Get to work. Get to work. If your friend calls you and says, I have something, tell him, oh, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on a project right now. Don't be offended. I'm on a project. The name of the project is advancement. The name of the project is going forward. The name of the project is upgrade. Let's hurry up number three. Let me see if I'm able to touch one or two more. Thank you. Number three. The third decision you must make you want to upgrade your life you want to use this gift God gave you is the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment the decision to discover and fulfill your God ordained assignment I'll not talk much here it's clear enough your God ordained assignment Hebrews 10 and verse 7 lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O God it is written concerning every man there is a role you have to play in destiny do not rob your generation of an opportunity to experience God through your life through the efficiency of your witness stop escorting others around the corridors of destiny there is a place for you find it by the spirit my life changed many years ago a dearly revered mentor he's going to be with the lord now his book discovering your purpose dr miles munro i read that book and it revolutionized my life completely thank god that even though he's gone his thoughts are still there go and buy the truth use humility as a currency buy the truth and learn all you can about your destiny many people depend on your destiny and many people are waiting for you to manifest in your rising is the arising do not fail number four the fourth decision and I want everybody to listen carefully a very major decision is the decision to be healthy and physically sound you will think this is just a passive decision that should not be mentioned in church if you are not healthy you will die let me tell you that I'm not prophesying doom I'm telling you the laws and the consequences that follow are we together now please look up everyone is given the gift of one body per lifetime one body per lifetime you don't have access to two it's not recorded in scripture one body a lifetime to hold to host your spirit and keeping that body healthy to host your spirit for as long as it would take to live your assignment is your responsibility are we together God will support you with his word with his spirit with his power with his grace but remaining healthy enough so that your spirit can live comfortably when your body deteriorates beyond a certain threshold your spirit will have to leave even if it's not your time make up your mind that I will be healthy if you're a man of God here let me encourage you in love there are many men of God today with all due respect who are sick because of carelessness with their bodies not their spirits their bodies are we together one of our doctors was telling me that many people today with kidney problems a major cause of the kidney problem is that they don't drink water they don't drink water are we together and you know in Africa sometimes we because of the backgrounds we came from 
when you get to a restaurant, you take Coca-Cola and Fanta and chicken, no water. You say, give me three bottles. I've suffered. I've suffered in this life. So you are on a revenge mission. And as you gulp all those things, remember the sons of the prophet said there is death in the pot. Even the pot can carry death. You have to be aware of what you eat. Are we together? You've heard my story for some of you. During my retreats, I take out time and I do an inventory of my life. And one time I found out for three years in a row, I wasn't necessarily sick, but my health was the worst performing area in my life. I was just not, and you know, because of the anointing, when you see so much of healing and signs and wonders, you feel guilty taking care of your body. After all, the power of the Holy Ghost is there. Do you know Elisha died? Do you know what killed Elisha? The anointing remained while life left. Did you hear what I said? The anointing remained on Elisha while life left. Don't covet that testimony. That the life left, but the anointing still remained on the dead body, on the sick body till he died. You can be very anointed and still die. Take care of your body. I, I encourage my people, I charge them. In fact, at the end of the year, I insist upon them to go for a medical checkup. You are a man of faith, so what are you afraid of? Go for a medical checkup. Find out what in the world is going on in that body so that if there is a call for emergency, you know how to appropriate God's power fast. But living in denial until you deteriorate to a point where it depletes your finances, your health, other people who have to pack up their jobs to maintain you and eventually you still die. Is someone learning? You will thank me for what you are learning. You are calling it an upgrade. For some of you, nothing is wrong with your transformation. But the level of carelessness with your body, God is calling you to order. Right now, you see young people, 20 years, 30, 35, high blood pressure, having all kinds of things. What does a young man have to do with high blood pressure? Because of the careless use of this body. This body is a gift. Use it well. Use it well. Use it well. Hallelujah. So for someone, you will be healed though. In the name of Jesus, you have any pain, you are going to be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. But you have a responsibility. When God starts increasing you financially, before you buy clothes, invest in your health. Don't put clothes on a dying body. No. And don't say it is lack of faith to go for a medical checkup. Doctor, check me from head to toe. Please, let me know what is wrong. If the healing power is at work in you, medicine will show that you are all right. This headache that happens all the time, what is the cause? Oh, this and that and that. Adjust this, adjust that, adjust it. That's all. And you are free. Otherwise, you will keep driving it carelessly until one day you find out that you fell somewhere in the marketplace and they took you to the hospital. Which one is more embarrassing? To carry yourself to the hospital and be treated or to be carried to the hospital because what you are afraid of will still happen if you don't take your health seriously extend this talk to your parents and your loved ones let me tell you what a medical professor taught me sir he said after every 10 years cycle in your life the dynamics of living changes that means from 20 to 30 the dynamics of living changes. 30 to 40, it changes. 40 to 50. That means the strategy you deploy should be per 10 year cycle. By the time you clock 40, you can't live like 20 again. Wisdom is profitable to direct. You don't like what you're hearing. health go back this night and make up your mind some of you need to go and get supplements responsible organic supplements while you are praying in tongues you tell yourself I wouldn't die my grandfather died it was witchcraft through carelessness 
but I will block that door. The power of God will deal with the witchcraft while my will deals with the carelessness part. That's the partnership that keeps you long. That's why I told you longevity is a choice. When you say you choose life, you don't just say I choose life. You make pro-life decisions. This is what the church is about. You should be mentored in church that you go back home as a father and gather your family tomorrow and say, listen, as the priest of this home, I've come with a new resolution. We are going to be healthy in this family. Can the men say amen? And then the women answer too and go back to the kitchen and did so many things in that kitchen and say in the name of Jesus we will live long don't kill yourself because of what enters your mouth number five we have to wrap up Takoradi you invited me to come and teach on upgrade this is what it means to be upgraded decisions your health your health your health number six number what number five the decision to be financially empowered <laughs> just write it many people shout like this and it still doesn't work just write it the decision to be financially empowered let me tell you the truth look at me beloved people I love you with all my heart and I came to bless you no matter what good happens in your life if finance is not part of them you will suffer whether you believe it or not you just rest once and for all and don't even try to argue about it if your finance is not working eventually even your spiritual life will be affected do you know what took Israel to Egypt? Hunger, not witchcraft. Hunger. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says Jacob, even as a prophet, he heard, he saw that there was corn. Where? In Egypt. Corn was not the problem, the location. I hear that there is money, but that man is a very perverse man. So there's money, but the problem is the person and the location. And he looked upon his sons. Why do you look upon one another? Verse 2. Give us verse 2, media. Genesis 42 and verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn. Where? In Egypt. He said, Get you down Chita and buy for us from there that we may leave and not die without corn you will die even if you are a prophet let me tell you one of the enhancers of integrity is prosperity one of the enhancers there are many temptations that die naturally when God has shown you mercy financially the strength of temptation is its seductive nature that means it appeals to a need that is within you but once that need has been overcome through the abundant help of God it does not work again are we together now if you bring me baby food now and you say apostle be tempted you can't tempt me with it like what babies eat baby food or you put breast milk in a, a feeding bottle I would think you brought it for me to pray on it I will end up praying on it it can't be a temptation are we together now so temptations happen because they connect to a need that's the character of the spirit of seduction it looks for something you desire and then connects to it for your destruction make up your mind as a decision tonight that I will not be poor not by jumping carnally and oh I like money I'm obsessed about money no a responsible approach from a kingdom standpoint knowing that lack of finances can push you to Sodom I made up my mind that I will never manipulate anybody to come and preach number two I made up my mind that I will never inconvenience any ministry telling them give me 10 naira or give me this <laughs> It's an honor and a privilege to serve Jesus with all my heart. 
and before I came, he had been blessing people. And after I've gone, he will still raise people. Integrity is enhanced, listen to me, by prosperity. If you make up your mind that you will not prosper, you are doing a disservice to yourself, your children, and your children's children. There are many ladies today who should not have been prostitutes, but because of this finance thing. There are many young people, I don't know if it happens in Ghana, we have this thing in Nigeria where, you know, some of these are young boys, fraud and all of that. Does it happen here? In this place too? I hope you are not one of them. If you are one of them, you can choose. I taught you about choice. You can choose. Let me have your attention. Let me have your attention. Our time is up. The decision to be financially free. Can I be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen? The efficiency of your destiny, including ministry, is at the mercy of abundant financial resources. Don't be poor. Don't be poor. Make up your mind. I will not be poor. Now, there are those who say this, and it's simply the flesh. It's just carnality. That's not what I'm teaching you make up your mind if you truly love Jesus don't be poor if you truly love your children don't be poor and don't allow mediocres bring words and say don't worry it doesn't matter it does matter there are many people who have gotten into depression because of rent you are a better Christian if you live in your own house if you serve God in your own house you can lock it up and have a night vigil and not be afraid you can move to a neighborhood that allows you to serve God acceptably how do you say that does not matter? You can send your children to a school whose curriculum honors God and you are aware of it. Well, I've made my decision. I came as a midwife to help you make your decision. But by all godly means, make up your mind tonight. Even if you don't know your way out, tell yourself that in the name of Jesus, my children will not have to ask me a question tomorrow and say when God was helping others, where were you? That as a man of God, one day, you will not get into the ministry of manipulation. God is trying to sanitize the church. Partner with what God is doing. So that this money, money, money thing that has destroyed the church, we kick it out and serve God with integrity. But let me tell you an honest truth. If I stand here and I'm hungry and I'm not fasting, with the gift of prophecy on me, you think I will not say something about your life? That I would transact it to meet my need. When I'm hungry and I'm owing, and they're going to jail me tomorrow, and I see that there's a million dollars in your account, you're joking. I will call you and say, stand here first in a special place. Let me finish with other people, and I'll see you personally. There are many temptations that are resistible. The cure is to be empowered. Within the boundary of modesty, when your children are doing well, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic, when your wife is doing well, when your husband is doing well, you can stand with integrity and preach Jesus. Knowing that you will not drop the mic and have to go to jail tomorrow because you are owing in your rent. I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus. May God who is called Ebenezer, the one who helps men, who takes away shame from their life. May that God help you, Ghana. May that God help you, Takoradi. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, particularly the grace for structural establishment, that you will have enough to take care of your family and rid yourself of the temptation of compromise. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Sit down and let's wrap up, please. Thank you for your patience. Number six, I'll touch on it quickly. The decision to build destiny relationships. The decision to build destiny relationships. Let me answer a question that Bishop asked before introducing me. 
He said that there are a few preachers who had said perhaps they were trying to get me to preach once and maybe my schedule has not allowed. Why have I come here three times? I will tell you that. Number one, because I love Jesus. Number two, because I love you honestly. But number three, because of my relationship with him and his dear wife. Are you learning? Now look at me. If you have to use money to buy everything in your life, wisdom is not at work in your life. There are many things you will purchase in your life paid for by relationships. You are as wealthy as your relationships, not just your bank accounts. Are we together? There are many people today who are wealthy, but they are still grounded because they are not wealthy in relationships. Who likes you matters. Who hates you does not matter. Leave the naysayers. They are hating you does not count anything to your destiny at all. But who likes you? If you are Esther, pray that Ahasuerus will like you, else you will remain in Shushan. If you are Ruth, pray that Boaz will like you. If you are Abraham, pray that Abimelech will like you. If you are Lot, pray that Abraham will like you. Who likes you matters. Lot was not necessarily a wise man. So said his later decisions. But because he went with Abraham, everything Abraham had also came to Lot. Productivity is important, but relationships are a mysterious leverage. I have learned this in my life. And may it be true in your life from tonight. Not every relationship is equally valuable. You have to learn. There are general relationships. There are seasonal relationships. And there are destiny relationships. General relationships. Be nice to all men. Anybody you meet at all. Seasonal relationships. People who come into your life, but there is a timing to their value. So receive quickly what they have to deliver before the time is exhausted. And there are destiny relationships. You fight to keep those relationships. You swallow your pride. For instance, if Jesus wants to leave your boat, kneel down and beg him to stay. Don't say it doesn't matter. If Jesus leaves your boat, what happened to Jonah will happen to you. Two men were troubled. The difference was who was in their boat. For one, Jonah was in the boat. He brought loss and depletion. They almost died. He suggested their survival strategy. He said, throw me out and leave. But for another person, Jesus was in the boat. Same storm arose. But because of one relationship in the boat, they were preserved. Who you carry determines whether you arrive. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. When God wants to help you, he shortens the distance between you and a destiny helper. When a destiny helper holds your hands, he can bring acceleration to your life. John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man who laid down at Bethesda, the Bible says that man, when Jesus came to him after 38 years of suffering, he said, will thou be made holy? And the man said, I have no man. That was his problem. There is no relationship that can be a leverage to my healing. I have no man. I'm an anointed man of God, but I have no man who can speak a good word. I'm a great caterer. I can cook for kings. It's amazing that those who need you do not know you are the one they are looking for. So you will need to leverage on a relationship that has their ears. Joseph could interpret dreams, but who would connect him to Pharaoh? He would have re remained in prison there. But the wine presser was the lynx person. I'm praying for you. Whoever must show up in your destiny in this season and connect you to the next level of your life, I pray that God will send them speedily. I say it again to a receiver. May God send them speedily. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please sit down. Relationships are powerful. I had the honor this year 
to be invited by the prestigious Harvard University to deliver two lectures in their schools, not to preach, to deliver academic lectures. I'm not a professor. That's what relationships can do. I'm, I'm not saying this to brag. You have no idea how far relationships can go. One person's signature, please consider him, and that's it. There are people praying and sweating over visas, binding and casting demons, whereas the, everybody has ears. That means they were designed to be relational. What do you think God gave them ears for? What do you think God gave them hands for? The most difficult system, you can penetrate it through relationships. Somebody can like you and say, help this person. And because his father helped this person's father, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Is someone learning? Please value relationships. Don't insult people and say it doesn't matter. I don't need men. All I need is God. You are being sincere, but you will be punished severely for that level of ignorance. When it has to do with the world of men, you need men. Even Jesus as a man needed men. My life has been greatly helped today. Mercifully helped by God because of the ministry of men. Somebody who likes you can give a good word because of you. Ah, this is a great person. Please provide any assistance. In my own little way as a man of God, I have been used by God as a destiny helper. Ah, apostle, on your honor, please, what can I do for you? Is it this person, this person? Let me tell you, there are people in prison today, relationship would have brought them out. They didn't have a relationship. There are people today, there's, there's no job that you are desiring that a relationship cannot bring for you. And you believe me on this. Again, I pray for you. You don't need everybody, but the one person ordained by God to connect to your ministry, to connect to your destiny, to connect to your family, for your rising in the name of Jesus, beginning from this night, may my God allow for that connection in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Next time you are writing your streams of income, add relationships. If they ask you what are your streams of income, don't just say real estate, tech, relationships. Everything money can do, relationships can do, and can do it cheaper. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ that affords you the opportunity to be anointed and to serve the purposes of God. People are in hell today because of relationships or lack of it. People are with the Lord today in glory because of relationships. They chose to love Jesus. They chose to connect to him. Don't ignore people. Discern people as they come into your life. This woman, I see that she may look like an ordinary woman, but I've discerned that there is a grace upon her. She has the ears of many people and you invest in the relationship. Don't be too proud to say sorry. There are relationships you should never allow go out of your life. It will cost you, the, the injury will be too much. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be you my life today as I prepare to wrap up I imagine if I rejected Jesus such a priceless relationship where would I be now would you ever know about Joshua Selma imagine that I rejected my relationship with the Holy Spirit when I talk of relationship I don't just mean vertically horizontally anything that fights your relationship is fighting your potential for greatness beware of those who come to sow a seed of discord Someone who was there lifting your life and in one moment 
they make you hate your mother they make you hate your father they make you hate your friends they make you hate your destiny helpers it's an attack there are relationships you should never fight i hate my pastor ah, be careful be careful they may not be perfect but be careful the connection is to your advantage they are not god but they represent his program Are we together? There are relationships that I maintain jealously. Jealously. Those relationships are a profound advantage to my life. I'm not talking of parasitic relationships. Go and listen to my message, the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. You are as powerful as those who have chosen to stand with you. Let me show you a scripture in this conference and then we'll wrap up. It's a scripture the Lord showed me and it changed my life. Numbers chapter 1, I believe, and verse 5. I'd like you to read as loud and as clear. This is a secret to a man of God right now. Go ahead, one to read. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. Stop there. Read it again. And these are the names of the men. Ah, every time God sends you, there are names of men who should stand with you. Stand with you in prayer. Stand with you financially. It is your assignment to call them in the place of prayer. There is no man on assignment who goes alone. Every man on assignment, there are names. Hear me, my dear sister. If it is true that God has called you to run that business, then there are names of men that should stand with you. Man of God, you are alone in ministry, laboring over everything because you do not know that there are men. There are always men. Financial helpers, prayer helpers, comforters, supporters. No, you can't give up. You fasted too much. You've prayed too much. The rent issue would not stop you from going for ministry. Let's walk together. This scripture changed my life when God showed me. I'm not alone. I have God by my side. But there are certain men that God has brought to stand by me. This is a word of comfort to a man of God. Don't give up in ministry. There are men. Your assignment is not to look for them. Your assignment is to call them in the place of prayer. That church building, going about that church building just by using the Y, the X, you'll be frustrated. There are men already. They may not be Ghanaians, but they are men. Sent by God. You can be in Ghana and they can be in America. They can be at the Middle East. The man that was sent to empower Abraham was called Abimelech. The man that was empowered to, to raise Lot was called Abraham. The man empowered to raise Esther was called Ahasuerus. The man empowered to wipe the tears of Ruth was called Boaz. Have you found the man that God has placed to help you? These are the names of the men that shall stand with you. I know your father has gone to be with the Lord, but there are men that God has anointed to stand. I know your mother has gone to be with the Lord. You are an orphan, but there are men. You don't look for them. You call them in the place of prayer. These are the names of the men, man of God, that shall stand with you. There are men ordained by God to stand with this ministry that you will never go down. They stand financially. They stand in prayer. They use their influence, legal influence, political influence. This is how the economy of God runs. Listen, I'm wrapping up. I hope you are learning something this night. For some of you, this right here is your prayer request for tonight. That you go back home and lie down and say, Father, you called me. Where are the men? Why is getting a visa difficult? Where are the men anointed to help me at the embassy? Why is it difficult for me to get a house with integrity? There are always men. Your advancement is at the mercy of the men 
and the quicker you find them the quicker you arrive is someone learning tonight look at this right there's a gentleman on camera helping to capture this right there I came in and I saw wonderful protocol people as we arrived there were a team of people who received us so graciously those are the men anointed to stand can I tell you this every time you find the man anointed to stand you don't need to do explanation there is a connection if you have to beg people to stay if you have to manipulate people to stay they are strangers be patient you see let me tell you this this applies to any kind of relationship when you have not found people ordained to be in your life they will cheapen your value you will keep paying the price of maintenance let me tell you maintenance is costly especially when it does not connect try to put a BMW engine in a Mercedes Benz that's when you will know that maintenance is costly because the fundamental problem is that they were not supposed to connect are we together don't just see any rich man and believe that's the one sent to you and keep laying and harassing the person he will say remind me tomorrow remind me tomorrow you stay for 12 hours in an office he's not sent to you sir go back home and preserve your honor and say Lord where are the men who know the value of what I carry where are the men and one man can come into your family and say God sent me a family of four ladies and an old woman God sent me I'm not talking of corrupt and bad people genuine people sent by God and they will say the assignment is to make sure that all your children school to masters or PhD and get jobs and you say why are you doing this they say God sent me God sent me God sent me I found a few men in my life that were ordained by God to stand with me and I can tell you they have been priceless gifts to my life this is to everybody but let me encourage a man of God as we wrap up please go back and pray this night Lord I am tired of moving around begging and compromising there has to be a man sent I'm tired of compromises sent by God in the name of Jesus Christ let's stand The seventh and the final decision that you must make using the power of your will is the decision to be a blessing. You must make up your mind according to Genesis 12 and verse 3 that I will be a blessing. At the end of my life it will not be that I was a nuisance to creation. The decision to be a blessing. He says, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In thee, Joshua Selman. In thee, Bishop Asare. You can mention your name. In thee shall all the families in Ghana, all the families in Takoradi. That means there is an investment of the Spirit upon my life that makes me a blessing I am not a curse I am not a nuisance I am not a liability I am a blessing by grace someone shout he say I am a blessing say it convincingly say I am a blessing as a man of God I am a blessing as a businesswoman I am a blessing as a mother as a father as a preacher as a brother I am a blessing the seventh and final decision that you must make with your life is the decision to be a blessing hold hands with someone by your right and left in my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you.
glory, you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Sing it one more time. So in my life, be glorified, be glorified. path of the just through the quality of their decisions should always be as a light that shineth more and more and more and more father I decide that I will go forward I decide that I will be a blessing I decide that I will love you all the days of my life I decide that I will be transformed. A serious believer is praying. I decide that I will find my assignment in life and destiny. I decide that I will take care of my health and my physical well-being. I decide that I will invest in strategic relationships. I decide that I will be a blessing to my world. Someone go ahead and pray. Ghana pray. Takoradi pray. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching